The first thing I would do is start with a good coffee, a good coffee bean. An organic bean, a bean that I know is certified to have low or no mycotoxins. I would only brew the coffee with a spring water or a reverse osmosis water. There are a lot of contaminants in tap water, Brita filters, refrigerator filters do not cut it when it comes to water. If you want pure, clean water, get a good spring water that is heavily tested. Most of the time when I drink water, I do reverse osmosis water and I remineralize it. I think that's the safest way to get everything out of your water. The problem with Brita filters, refrigerator filters, is that they don't get PFAs, perfluoroalkyl substances, they don't get glyphosate, they don't get fluoride, and they leave a lot of organic contaminants in the water that you're going to be ingesting. Another big thing is that if I were going to drink coffee, I would not use one of these. I'm in an Airbnb right now, and I brewed this coffee to show you guys this, but you can see here on the inside of the coffee pot, there's a ton of condensation on the plastic. In order for the water to get from this apparatus into the coffee pot, it has to go through a bunch of plastic. It sits in plastic where if it's heated, it condenses on plastic and it goes through a filter that is partially plastic. There are a lot of endocrine disrupting compounds and plastics that are all ending up in your glass coffee pot and that is less than ideal as well. If I were going to drink coffee, I would use a glass French press or a pour over. You don't want hot water touching plastic. If I wanted sugar in my coffee, I would use a raw honey, preferably a raw organic honey that I know is glyphosate free. I don't fear honey. I don't fear fruit. I don't fear maple syrup. There's actually a lot of good evidence that honey and maple syrup, these sugars, do not worsen insulin resistance. They don't worsen metabolic dysfunction. Honey specifically has been shown to improve insulin sensitivity even in diabetics. You don't have to eat a ton if you're not that active, but if you want sweetness in your coffee, honey is way better than artificial sweeteners and processed high fructose corn syrup or processed table sugar, in my opinion. A lot of you guys ask me about stevia and monk fruit. Stevia and monk fruit have got to be better than aspartame, ACE K, sucralose, all these silly artificial sweeteners, which I have major concerns about in terms of potentially causing weight gain or problems with weight loss in humans. Though there are trials showing that artificial sweeteners like those don't cause weight gain compared to a sugar sweetened beverage, long term, I have concerns that artificial sweeteners like aspartame, sucralose, ACE-K, etc., are going to worsen satiety, confuse the body, and lead to problems with weight loss. Stevia and monk fruit, we don't have the data, but we know that stevia will change the gut flora, will interrupt quorum sensing in the gut flora. That worries me a little bit. I don't use stevia, I don't use artificial sweeteners, I don't fear things like honey or maple syrup for those reasons. Along with all of this, I would wait 90 minutes after I woke up to drink my coffee, and I would not drink my coffee after 12 p.m. We know that caffeine found in coffee, especially this coffee, that has a lot of caffeine in it, has a half-life of five hours. That means that if you drink a cup of coffee with 200 milligrams of caffeine in it at noon at 12 p.m., you could potentially have 50 milligrams, a quarter of that amount of caffeine, still in your body at 10 p.m. when you go to sleep. That can disrupt sleep architecture for all humans but especially those people who are sensitive to that caffeine. So that is not something that you want. You wanna be careful about caffeine and your sleep architecture. We know that caffeine will disrupt your sleep architecture. Like I said at the beginning, I don't drink coffee and I know a lot of people who feel better in the morning when they don't drink coffee than when they do, whatever. I just wanna make this video for you guys and tell you guys how I would do it. But think about the timing of your coffee. We also know that caffeine depletes minerals. This has been well documented. It's a diuretic and it is going to cause loss of minerals. Many people find that they are okay with this if they just spend a lot of time and attention repleting those minerals. Things like coconut water, orange juice, fruit juices, fruit, maybe some good sea salt, nutrient rich foods in general. But if you find yourself feeling depleted from coffee, especially in terms of minerals and electrolytes, think about supplementing these to go with your coffee and that may help that perspective as well. So in summary, there are a lot of studies suggesting potential benefits of coffee, maybe even potential benefits of caffeine, but all of this comes with possible downsides. I've tried drinking coffee in the past during my graduate school and medical school days. It made me feel very jittery. It gave me palpitations. And when I stopped drinking coffee, I got horrible, horrible headaches from withdrawal. I like personally waking up feeling fresh, feeling chipper, feeling ready to go without coffee. I know a lot of you drink it, but 
I think that there are a lot of people who can benefit from cutting it out. Having said that, there are ways to do it better and there are gradations of how good a coffee you can actually get. So think about all these things when you're drinking coffee and experiment with and without, see which helps you feel the best, but be very intentional about how you do the coffee because there are a lot of potential pitfalls here with coffee. And if you think about these and optimize, you can get the most out of your coffee and you can minimize the downsides.